well my dear students now we are going to start a very important topic in this series of technology of metal forming lectures extrusion right so the extrusion is a metal forming process the ex extrusion you most of you know that what do you mean by extrusion? You extrude something like day to day life applications, if you look at your houses etcetera, there are many applications of extrusion. But however, when we come to the metal forming aspect that we produce products of different shapes and size using extrusion process. So, we would be speaking in this lecture especially uh, on extrusion, various aspects of extrusion, the types of extrusion, cold and hot extrusion, warm extrusion and then the what is the process control, the toolings, especially the dies and then different advanced uh, varieties of extrusion processes. So, the extrusion has evolved and uh, from long back and uh, it has been found very suitable process for producing very complex varieties of shape having good mechanical properties and uh, with a stable speed with even at continuously one, one can extrude things metals as well. right? So, Keeping this in mind, what we are going to cover in this topic is usually the introduction and then the, the different processes of extrusion uh, as well as the what are the industrial practices in extrusion industries, uh, the hot extrusion, cold extrusion, what is the difference when we prefer hot extrusion, when we prefer cold extrusion, like the very important is the impact extrusion, hydrostatic extrusion and you know the extrusion any metal forming process in fact, it has to be carried out in such a manner that there is no defect form. There are varieties of defect we have already discussed in terms of the rolling, in terms of the forging and uh, how do we uh, take care so that none of the defects come either internal or external. So, uh, the defects, different varieties of defects and how would we control our process, so that this defect does not appear. And then uh, the equipments, what are the equipments that we usually use for the extrusion? Uh, in fact, extrusion and drying process are very similar. In extrusion, we push material through a die, and in, in drying, we push, we we uh, uh, pull the material through a die. So, and then uh, there are defects and the residual stresses also in extrusion. So, one has to control that, and uh, so we would look, to, uh, we would discuss on these issues, right? So, any of you have any problem, you can raise your hand and you can ask me, alright. So, let us start. So, uh, what is in fact extrusion? You know, uh, it is a compression forming process, you know, ok. So, a compression forming process wherein uh, the work piece, right, the work piece may be in the form of billet, 
in the form of uh, some other rectangular billet, circular billets and all that. And these billets or workpiece is forced to flow through a given die opening, so that one is able to produce a desired cross sectional shape that is the extrusion. So, basically it is a compression forming process. It is a process where a billet is forced through a die that is how the parts have therefore, constant cross section. Typical products of extrusion if you remember the sliding doors if you see the sliding doors, the, the tubing having various cross sections if you look at the market metallic even the plastics uh, the extrusion process is very extensively used, but the extrusion of plastic material is slightly different than the metals. So, in extrusion the cross section is almost constant. You can have the example of structural and architectural shapes and uh, door and window frames as well. So, in fact extrusion is a process which is similar to squeezing like toothpaste out of a uh, toothpaste tube you know. That is the very simple example to explain uh, a person who do not know about extrusion. So, if, if you take it is a process where you squeeze toothpaste out of a uh, to, uh, toothpaste tube right. So, uh, extrusion in general is used to produce long parts of a uniform cross section right. So, the positive things with extrusion is that you can have variety of sections possible uh, to be extruded very complex shapes as well uh, like when you use hot extrusion very complex and varieties of shape can be extruded. Then the grain structure which we obtain during the extrusion process uh, and the strength enhancement especially in cold extrusion process it is great. The grain is very refined we obtain and the strength is also very good uh, in cold forming process. Uh, and the one thing very good is that we obtain very close tolerance especially in cold extrusion right and uh, at all there is no wastage of material like in machining. The wastage in the form of the discard of the billet is not a wastage because those discard portion which is one seventh of the length of the billet is usually remelted and again casted to form a billet which is recycled ok. So, that is how it is uh, said that uh, this has no wastage of the material all right. If you look at the difference between the cold extrusion and hot extrusion, we discussed earlier also the processes what is the difference between cold and hot, what is the margin the temperature one alloy can be extruded either cold or hot condition. So, in hot extrusion uh, the prior heating of the billet uh, to above its recrystallization temperature is very important. Then only you can load the, the, the heated billet uh, that is the prior heated billet uh, in the um, extrusion press. So, that is the need and uh, once you preheat billet that uh, reduces the strength and uh, the increases the ductility of the material in fact and uh, permitting more size reduction and more complex shape to be formed that happens only in hot extrusion. Whereas, in cold extrusion which is generally used to produce discrete parts small small parts of having less deformation. The term uh, the impact extrusion is used to indicate a very high speed of cold extrusion right a very special name uh, given as the impact extrusion you will find. The material uh, processes uh, most of the material possess uh, 
some degree of strain hardening, right. So, uh, we take advantage of the strain hardening in cold extrusion and so we get a very uh, good tolerances. Look at this figure, the where the varieties of uh, solid is uh, especially the solid and hollow extrusions are shown here. You look at the such a complex shape and the size also you look at these extrusion ranges the variety of the different extrusions which is available in market and today day by day uh, one can know that in Florida and all that people are going 100 percent building construction through the extruded sections itself. They, they have the different extrusions sections and they keep on uh, adding, adding and build a blocks of buildings. So, that is the uh, advances in extrusion process. So, again you look at this figure where you have very complex varieties of uh, extruded sections, right. These sections could be of uh, aluminum mostly which is a, a very light alloy. It can be uh, steel as well like steel alloys, uh, it can be brass, it can be bronze and uh, uh, the no doubt the aluminum because it is very light and cheap, it is very popular uh, material for extrusion. Okay. So, uh, there is another figure here which is much more complex. You see the fin, these fins are very popular with the computer processor for the as a cooling. Uh, you provide well of the cooling fan these fins to discharge the heat faster. So, that is another example and you look at the size and the complexity. There are huge number of there are huge varieties of uh, places where the aluminum extrusion. Now, the doors aluminum doors are very popular you can see anywhere in the offices right. Look this figure a very complex extruded cross section for a heat sink. Uh, you look at this is very popular. So, it is a very complex uh, cross section. Uh, it is no doubt of aluminum, but it can be extruded of can be uh, of other alloys as well. All right. So, if we classify the standard shape, let us look at this standard shapes of the extrusion which is channel, then you have uh, 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 another channel, then round tubes, you have hollow uh, hexagonal tubes, you have round bars, you have angles, you have solid hexagonal bars, you have uh, I sections, I beams etcetera, you have uh, bars like plate, you have T section you have a square tubes, a square section tubings, you have uh, square rectangular solids, you have also uh, like uh, bus bars, you have a structural T sections, you have jet bars, you have a structural channels, you have H bars, you have structural angles and many many like your rectangular tubes and varieties. So, these are some of the standard extrusion shapes. So, now you realize how complex is the process or the product that we can obtain from extrusion process. Look at this one, another class of application of the extrusion process where uh, this shows the example of products which is made by sectioning of extrusion say you have a long and then you chop up, chop up, chop up of different length and you get like you get a gear. So, it is a long extrusion and then you chop up to get the size of a gear like the first application, this application. So, this class where you have the section sectioning of extrusions is another variety, another application of extrusion process. Okay. 
On the other hand, uh, we have pipes, tubes and uh, even the wire manufacturing, we use the extrusion process. Uh, usually the tubes are produced by butt or electric welding and piercing, but you can also produce with extrusion process. Like if you see in this figure, here a mandrel is penetrated through. Uh, so, it is again a process rolling uh, along with the mandrel penetration and then pushing the. Uh, so, it is a different other ways of producing different other uh, 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 products where the there is a partial application of extrusion as well, right. So, basically we can classify extrusion in a very broad way in direct extrusion and indirect extrusion. So, in case of direct extrusion, the ram, you know the ram, ram forces the work piece material metal to move forward to pass through the die opening, right. So, you push in this direction and the product also which comes out of the die if it is in the same direction, we call it as a direct extrusion. Whereas, in case of indirect extrusion, the die is mounted to the ram uh, rather than at the opposite end of the extruder uh, container housing, right. So, uh, the indirect extrusion. So, look at this figure where the schematic illustration of the direct extrusion process has been shown. So, if you look at the different components, you have the container and then you have the container liner, because the liner is in direct contact, container liner is in direct contact with the billet and ram. The billet sometimes it is very hot, so it is the container liner that saves the container and then you have the pushing ram, the pressing is stem, you have a dummy block you look at the dummy block is generally which is in direct contact with the billet phase and on the other side it is in contact with the, the pressing stem. So, pressing stem it does not come into direct contact with the billet and it is uh, it is a so dummy block work as a safety for uh, uh, pressing stem right. Now, you look at the red part which is a die, the workpiece material is the billet and the die backer is again uh, is used to support the back, because the die is very heavily stressed and uh, so a part of the force uh, arising of the pressing is shared by the die backer and uh, that is how the die backer is important and you look at the extrusion which comes out. So, you will see the direction of the pressing ram and the, the direction of the extrusion, it is in the same direction and that is how this is called as a direct extrusion. Is this ok? So, on the other hand, look at this figure, uh, which is the two dimensional uh, picturization of the previous one, where now you see the ram v is the velocity with force f is required to the extrusion to start. Later we will see uh, or if you remember the first lecture the where the upper bound say any process to take place you require a minimum force and the energy, so that the process is starts right. So, if uh, v is the velocity at which you want to push the, the, the work piece billet in the container and f is the force. So, that is the situation. In case of uh, backward extrusion, if you look at say uh, in case of tube, when you this is the, the first case is your solid extrusion through single hole die, right. The other case, if you want to produce a solid section which has a hollow, so you require a, uh, uh, you require a kind of uh, 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 mandrel. So, you see the figure. The, the bottom figure, you have a ram and uh, it is it has a supporting 
mandrel which is mounted near the die. Okay, the arrangement are kept in such a manner that the mandrel is attached to the die, and then there is a shearing of the material of the workpiece billet, and it passes through the opening. And at one place, it it uh, weld the material gets weld, and you produce a hollow section. Okay, so whenever you want to have hollow sections to be produced you need to have a mandrel, all right. So, that is the def difference. Look at this figure, the indirect extrusion, the what are the different parts you look at. So, you have the dummy block, which is a backing this, right. You have the billet there, you have container similar to the forward and you have now tool stem is slightly different than in the direct extrusion. All right, you have a die, the red part, and the container. So you have here the indirect extrusion. You see the billet, the dummy block, the backing disc, right? So you push the the tool stem in this direction, okay? In this direction, okay? and the, the product that is the extrusion comes in the opposite direction. So, here is, that is the process where the friction is supporting the process. In the direct extrusion, the friction between the container, it is opposing the process. So, that is how you require lesser load in case of indirect extrusion. So, indirect extrusion becomes very popular sometimes as far as the energy consumption is concern the indirect extrusion for the same shape it requires lesser energy okay so this, this process is shown uh, in 2d so again you have a die uh, and the extrusion comes in opposite direction to the rans motion uh, you require lower extrusion force uh, as the work billet moves is not moving relative to the container wall here, right. So, that is how you see the final shape which comes out. You have varieties of uh, sections that you produce in hollow and semi hollow shapes like this case, the right. It is a C section, it is a semi hollow shape, right. Others like round tubes, rectangular tubes, and the other side which is the channel type, it is a semi hollow tube. So, you can produce all these shape by uh, extrusion process using uh, direct or indirect process, all right. A very important process, uh, now it is, it has become popular, we call it as a hydrostatic extrusion. See, in these processes what happens, the advantage is that uh, uh, you require higher, very high load, and uh, if you see the uh, the stresses that develops sometimes. So, and uh, you know the all direct extrusion or indirect extrusion material that alloy that you are going to extrude. Basically, it is a very uh, ductile materials. You can't use brittle materials. So, the hydrostatic process is a process where you make use of uh, fluid, pressurized fluid and uh, uh, the billet is not directly in contact with the pressing stem. It is direct contact with the pressurized fluid and this pressurized fluid is pushed by the pressing stem as you see here. There are seals to produce pressure tight chamber around the billet and you see the location of the die, you see the location of the die baker and uh, the flute which is there. You see the flute which is the blue color, it is contacting the, the billet green part through the ceilings, right. So, when you press, you know the hydrostatic stress do not participate in uh, uh, shaping. 
So, the very good thing has been observed that the stresses are very uniform stresses there and uh, we get very uniform mechanical properties through the hydrostatic extrusion and there are varieties of hydrostatic extrusion we will discuss later in this uh, lecture itself, where you can uh, extrude even brittle material for an example cast iron. Can you extrude cast iron by direct or indirect extrusion? No, it is not possible, but if you use the hydrostatic extrusion the, the other variety you can even extrude the uh, 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 such kind of br brittle materials as well. So, in case of hydrostatic extrusion, you use hydrostatic system to reduce the friction and uh, lower the power requirement and uh, sealing is very important problem here to look at the two dimensional situation of the same. Again you have the ram velocity v and but it is indirect with the fluid pressurized fluid. If you look at the uh, uh, the billet which is being extruded in the container and the, the pressure required. This figure shows as I said the, the energy requirement in direct extrusion and indirect extrusion. You look, look at the initially in the direct extrusion the, the load the pressure extrusion pressure or ram pressure is very high you can see there. On the other hand, because of the nature of the backward extrusion or indirect extrusion, the, the actual extrusion begins at this lines, even either direct. So, that is the vertical line for the actual extrusion. So, before extrusion you require very heavy load and that is much, much higher than the direct extrusion in case of direct extrusion and in case of indirect extrusion this is lesser. And you see in the indirect extrusion, once the extrusion is, star, uh, is started, it is very stabilized, it is stabilized. Whereas, in indirect extrusion, it is because the length of the billet is reducing in case of direct extrusion and that is how the load requirement, pressure requirement goes down and that is the another the bulk formation where uh, because a certain length is left you cannot extrude that is called as the butt formation. So, this butt uh, is left and the remaining billet length L here. So, you have the ram stroke shown in the x direction and P is the pressure ram pressure required and thus you can compare. Uh, as I said the die angle is very important whenever you use a die say for an example if you use a conical die. So, the conical die has a, an angle, there is an angle and associated die length therefore, that gives the minimum force for extrusion. So, that is the shown in the uh, right side the conical die one of the conical die having die angle alpha is shown. So, you can see the variation of the ram force with ram stroke and die angle, right. So, you can see the minimum that at optimal die angle and uh, you have the higher friction at lower low alpha angle and uh, therefore, the higher reduction work at the high angle is there. If you if even if you take the lower angle uh, apart from the uh, optimal then also you require high uh, pressure and if it even if it is more than the uh, angle alpha. So, that we call as the redundant work. So, higher redundant work is uh, there when the angle is less than optimal angle or uh, higher than optimal angle. All right. This is another application where the lateral extrusion. So, in case of lateral extrusion generally you see the punch and you have a plate 
and uh, there is a container lateral extrusion generally it is vertically done and uh, the die you can see the location and there is a die holder and uh, die backer and all that and you push it through the vertically and you that is how we get a lateral the extrusion comes out. There are certain uh, advanced and recent applications of the extrusion as well. So, in this category is very important is the continuous extrusion process. So far whatever we discuss forward, backward, uh, lateral or uh, uh, hydrostatic all these processes utilize a, a length of die a, a billet. If that billet is consumed is, is extruded you have to put another. So, that is how it is not a continuous process, it is a segmented process or it is a discontinuous process. So, to continue uh, the process endlessly we call it as an extrusion continuous extrusion process, where you utilize grooved extrusion wheel. So, look at this figure, this case shows the continuous extrusion process and uh, we have uh, a grooved extrusion wheel at you see, then there is a feed stock right and there is a uh, the groove seal segment sealing you have then the blocking abutment. So, the wheel rotates in one direction, the feed stock is taken into and it passes through the grooved area and once it tries to come out on the other side. So, there is a backing uh, blocking abutment. So, it cannot go on the other side and there is a then opening is made through the die and uh, so there is a shoe retaining block and uh, that we call it is the extrusion shoe that has got a die and then it comes through the die and the extrusion we take place so this figure where you have uh, you look at the section x this section has been shown on the right hand side so you see at the section x you have shoe on one side, upper side, you have the segment right and uh, you have the feed stock, the round feed stock and there, there is a minimum operating clearance between the, the segment and uh, the wheel right and once you push it. So, this continuous extrusion process is a friction assisted. So, this is also called as a friction assisted process extrusion process. So, where you use make use of the friction to help the extrusion and this extrusion this friction comes out between the, the group of the channel uh, of the wheel and uh, you have the then pressure on the side and then it, it, it is not allowed to go out of the blocking abutment and then the only opening remains through the die and it comes out. So, the another section has been shown there, you have the rotation of the wheel, you have the abutment, you have the product that comes out there and uh, you have the die you shown and uh, you have the expansion channel and there is a gripping segment. So, gripping is important. So, once uh, the gripping and there is a uh, idler wheel. So, this continuous extrusion is very popular, the analysis part is also important. The die portion analysis remains same almost, but the other analysis like the how much is the gripping length, how much is the, uh, the diameter of the uh, your uh, 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 wheel what is the depth of the channel group and all those are the design issues and uh, 
we have we have designed it we have developed the machine for this also we fabricated as well and uh, it works well so that's a process where you have only one wheel all right continuous extrusion there is another process we call it as a, a two extrusion wheel right so you look at this figure where that consists of two extrusion wheels uh, uh, revolving in the opposite direction and uh, work material is fed from both the sides simultaneously look at the two streams material are blocked by a modified common abatement before passing through the extruding die. So, you see there the feed is stock, it comes through this way also, it comes through this way also and there is a common die and mandrel arrangement and uh, so it comes out and uh, you get a tube extrusion as well as. So, the tube extrusion is another application where the continuous uh, extrusion can have mostly the refrigerator tubings you know the refrigerator tubings where it is a aluminum very thin wall tubes are very widely produced by continuous extrusion process right and that is the another you can even produce with the single uh, wheel continuous extrusion, but this is another where you utilize two wheels right. So, this is another the same thing picture where the typical example of hollow extrusion and uh, you have the, the group blocking piece. The, so, the combination of the wheel and uh, mandrel uh, results in extrusion of hollow sections in this case. Also the presence of the mandrel uh, causes a drop uh, uh, build up resulting in the temperature uh, being reduced. Uh, so, that hot shot material can be extruded by this process continuous extrusion process. Continuous extrusion process is also known as confirm process, confirm process and uh, there is a company confirm extrusion named as uh, they, they supposed to develop this process and how the name become confirm. So, continuous extrusion process. Yet uh, another use the two wheel uh, confirm that offers the manufacturing of clad section right. So, clad section. So, the metal cladding is very popular uh, we use you see the other situation where um, other figure where the uh, instead of the mandrel used in the manufacture of the hollow section we use the cladding. So, you produce a metal cladding on to the another case. So, that is another one. So, this is this slide what shows the usual process layout for conform extrusion or continuous extrusion process. Okay. You see the number one where you have the rod feeding arrangement. In fact, these rods are in a real kind of thing. It is vertically mounted. So, it is real and you can take it out of the reel. So, the rod feeding system is in one. Secondly, the, the feed is stock cleaning where you clean because these rods dirt etcetera. Then the third is the rod feed pre uh, heat you slightly preheat it. So, that your uh, material becomes softer and you require lesser uh, extrusion energy. And then the fourth is where the feed stock control uh, and shaping is there. And the fifth one is the granular feed. This can all the continuous extrusion process has also been used uh, using powder materials, right. So, you can put some powders also. Uh, then you have the six is the conform machine, that is the wheel. And uh, seventh is the product. Uh, which comes out and it is taken into the coil form. The eight is the product that you can chop it up, you can uh, or you can slightly uh, collect it and uh, ninth 
is your dancer for where you uh, try to straighten it and then the drum you can take up the the whole product into a coil form in a real form tenth one okay so this shows the basic layout of the confirm process there is another very popular process we call it as the caustic process caustics right so what happens in caustic process we have a molten metal we use molten metal in spite of the continuous extrusion process this is also a continuous extrusion process but in continuous extrusion process you have a wire in fact or rod in the real form but here we use the molten metal form so uh, in a tandis you have the metal molten metal and there is a stopper to allow to go uh, into the channel into the channel this molten metal having the uh, prevented uh, heat loss system and then it passes through the uh, solidification shoe first and then it comes through the extrusion shoe like here. So, the molten metal gets uh, directly. So, here the casting is taking place and then again extrusion. Uh, similar to your continuous extrusion process. So, there is a abutment you see, then here it comes out, then it gets extruded. So, tube, uh, the die arrangement. So, you can also produce the hollow sections extrusion continuously. So, the only beauty is of that here you use direct molten metal for producing sections, all right. There is another very popular process, we call it is a line x process. Line x process means linear extrusion, right. So, uh, this is a principle of operation that is a, a linear type continuous extrusion. So, continuous extrusion there the previous we have used as a wheel form, but here we can use linearly. So, you see the feed is stock in this case the arrangement is shown here, you have the tip gripper block, the bottom gripper block and the upper uh, gripper block and uh, then you have the feed stock like and the grip surface are there. So, we pass the feed stock between the two, uh, the upper gripper block and lower gripper block and then you have a die fork. So, you have die fork where the die is mounted and once this pushes these are the gripper blocks, then the extrusion in the form of wire it comes out. So, it is a linearly comes right. So, that is another very beautiful process of extrusion. There is another example uh, process we call it is the extrolling. As the name indicates, extrolling is a process where extrusion and rolling both comes. So, the extrolling process uh, combines both rolling and extrusion with the high reductions possible in extremely small reductions per pass and finite length respectively. You, you can see the arrangement here, uh, there is a two rollers that moves opposite, the stock comes out it passes through. So, it comes out the roll and then there is arrangement where you have it passes through to produce the. So, you here you do not have any ram pushing ram all right. So, the only thing is that you have a uh, two rollers that pushes. So, like in extru, uh, a rolling what you do, you have two rollers you push it it comes out. So, that is the another beauty full application of extrusion. So, the details of this if you see the extrolling process is shown here, where you have the, the chamber, die chamber and the, the extrolling die chamber you see the, the, the increasing contact area, uh, how it is produced 
the die and die block is shown, the groove, the, the incoming rod which comes out and then how the these uh, rollers takes into, it passes through near to the die block, in, enters into the die block and the product comes out. Basically, you produce a wire of, out of this, right. You can also produce thin sections as well. There are varieties of products uh, possible using uh, extolling process. Uh, usually, uh, warm, you can slightly the intake uh, rod is slightly heated, preheated, and uh, so you reduce the uh, the load and uh, you reduce the, the flow stress of the material and uh, that is how the process takes place. As I said, the hydrostatic extrusion can be used for even the brittle materials, like the basic principle of hydrostatic stress where you have, uh, first you look at this figure where the loading of the die and billet you take in case of the hydrostatic extrusion. The secondly, there is a filling the container with pressurized fluid as I said and then the extrusion happens. Once the extrusion has taken place, then you saw the and remove the, the die and discard part and then how you take out the products. As far as the pressure is there, the pressure extrusion pressure is uh, it becomes initially it is higher even in case of uh, hydrostatic extrusion and then it, once it is stabilizes then it is quite uniform. So, the peak is the, the extrusion uh, and then it goes down once the extrusion is, is starts the lower uh, pressure. There is another version of uh, hydrostatic uh, extrusion where we call as both side, we discussed so far only one side there is a hydrostatic pressure that is where the billet is kept. Another variety may be where uh, the when the product comes out on that side also there is a pressure and that is how the you create a damping arrangement. So, this slide shows the damping arrangement for hydrostatic extrusion where you see the, the damper cell is produced and uh, there is a seal on that side and then the billet and then the die. Okay. So, this damper uh, again is smoothens the process. Okay. So, on the other side if you see the container, the mandrel, the pressurized fluid this has been shown and that is the damper cage which is shown here. Okay. So, that is the another beauty. Uh, another version that happens to be uh, the hydrostatic extrusion called as a fluid to fluid hydrostatic extrusion as I said. So, on the other side when the product comes out there also there is a back pressure chamber of the fluid. So, there is a from the forward side there is a pressurized fluid okay, and then there is a die and then when the extrusion takes place comes out right then there is a back pressure chamber of the pressurized fluid but the pressurized fluid on the forward side is more pressure and the, on the other side it is less pressure so uh, that is another version of hydrostatic extrusion on the other hand uh, the augmented extrusion hydrostatic extrusion process is very popular it is especially for uh, extruding very brittle material. For an example, cast iron also can be extruded with this process, augmented extrusion, hydrostatic extrusion process. Okay. So, you have a pressurized fluid, you have a top container, you have a ram with the central bore pressure connections like shown here, then you have a bullet, uh, bottom container and uh, again then you have the the billet and pressurized fluid and then the die because when you extrude the brittle material it requires very heavy pressure and it has to be stabilized. So, the hydrostatic pressure 
it is stabilized in two chamber the top container and the bottom containers and uh, so you can produce varieties of uh, extrusion shape of uh, brittle materials using this process. As far as uh, other process in the category of continuous extrusion falls is the semi continuous hydrostatic extrusion. So, this figure shows a semi hydrostatic extrusion process where the arrangement where you have the low pressure fluid and there is a high pressure fluid which is the extrusion fluid there is the external clamp you can see where the uh, the continuous billet enters from this side and uh, in the machine through the low pressure and then it passes through the uh, high pressure then the extrusion takes place right there is a rubber sleeve around all around and the extrusion comes out so that is how it is called as semi uh, continuous hydrostatic process there is another process we call it the viscous drag extrusion. Viscous drag extrusion we make use of the viscosity of the fluid, right. So, you see here there is a high fluid, uh, very high fluid on the viscous fluid and that is pushed through this ram and uh, it passes through the once it passes through the die for the pushing, then you produce uh, extrusion out of this process. So, there is another arrangement we call it as the tandem continuous hydrostatic extrusion. So, you have a another arrangement the feeding you can look at this there is and the extrusion is on the other side. There is a very uh, another typical extrusion process we call as hydrofilm process. So, here you see the hydrofilm process is uh, characterized by a thick film of lubricant arm, the billet and by a lower volume of pressurized fluid right. So, the volume of the fluid is adjusted to the, the amount retaining to produce the needed hydrostatic pressure using uh, extrusion ram sealed at the front end all right. So, here the pressure applied uh, directly to the, the billet by the ram at the start of the extrusion, but not necessarily during extrusion uh, giving therefore, advantage of augmented extrusion. And, uh, it has many applications. Uh, you can look the arrangement you have ram, then you have the sealing ring, you have the billet and then you have the film of pressurized fluid. So, and uh, that separates the film of lubricant and how the extrusion takes place. There is another very popularly uh, combination we call it as the helical extrusion. So, this figure shows the the stage 1 where the piercing takes place, the liquid again you have a fluid pressure in helical extrusion. So, there is a primary die. So, this process combines three forming stages right. So, three forming stages means the hydrostatic extrusion, the conventional extrusion and an intermediate stage which is similar to uh, athetine process. Uh, all these three operations take place simultaneously, so that helical extrusion is a single operation, it appears, but in fact it is in three steps, but it happens to be very quick in the steps. So, it appears happens to be single process and uh, very large reductions are possible with this process. Uh, and uh, one can produce uh, billet to wire and uh, you can see the arrangement here, the product, the direction of rotation of the rotating tool that is there 
and uh, the billet which comes out and then the product comes out. So, that is the final die the primary die and uh, so the more details you can refer uh, some research papers on uh, I just thought to cover the different varieties of extrusion and that is how I, I limit myself to be very brief here and uh, hopefully uh, you might have got the flavor of extrusion different extrusion process. As far as the uh, quality of the extrusion are concerned, the cold extrusion as I said it gives very uh, good surface finish, uh, it you can have you can achieve the proper tolerances. On the other hand hot extrusion uh, gives the complex shape, very heavy reduction possible which is not possible in cold extrusion and uh, uh, the hydrostatic extrusion, the augmented extrusion that you can use for producing even uh, brittle materials. right? So, this is what is the extrusion varieties of extrusion. Uh, as far as the analysis is, is of the extrusion process, we will cover in the few subsequent few lectures and uh, hopefully uh, all these processes that we have covered. There are certain parameters say the die length, die angle, even the die temperature. Usually the isothermal extrusion is carried out in such a manner that the temperature remains same. Extrusion if the temperature is not same we are bound to have the defects in extrusion. As when the extrusion comes the central region of the material, it moves faster than the, the material which is in contact with the your uh, die are in contact with the your uh, 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 container. So, there is a difference of the uh, the speed. Okay. So, to balance this speed we use uh, a part in the die bearing, we call it as the bearing. So, the it controls the size of the and it controls the speed by the bearing surface friction and the bearing length one can balance the speed and there is no defect we would explain the varieties when we cover the different types of dyes that are used later. So, hopefully uh, uh, you might have been clear about and uh, I will again ask you to give your feedback about this lecture and uh, I thank you once again all of you, thank you, thank you once again.